Okay, so the painting is done now. This is my third video chronicling this process, so this is definitely a pretty in-depth um, video series showing these builds, which I've kind of gotten away from because some have been so simple. There's not a whole lot to show you, but this one's obviously been quite in-depth, and you can see that we have many pieces here. Everything's painted out now and um, complete, really just kind of letting it sit. Need to let it really sit for at least another 24 hours before I start assembling. The paint is still not really cured completely. Even when you use these um, acrylic spray paints, they tend to take, it, you really should give them a good 24 hours at least, um, even more if you can be patient. And then since some of these I had used an enamel, um, or an enamel-based uh, texture spray paint, kind of as a, a primer coat almost, those tend to even take a little longer to cure. So you got to learn to be patient, which is always tough for me. Anyway, when it comes to 3D printing, everything here probably, it is probably at least the equivalent of three full days of printing. And again, I have a rather fast printer, um, an Anchor Make M5, so it, it still took forever, especially the stock. I made the stock way too intricate. And because of that, it just, and the size of it, of course, it just took a very long time to do. But everything's all done and ready to go. So that's cool. Um, colors I went with, with the gray, the black. Um, I had another gray that by the top of the can looked like it was going to be this dark one. However, when I sprayed it, it was almost identical to this color. So there was no reason to really use that. They were so close. So I have a few pieces that are this color, but I ran out of that spray paint. So I guess technically we got the three different colors going on. And you can see here, I talked about that I use these heat inserts that allow me in this case to use an M4 screw, and that's the size of the screw. And those, that way that I can go ahead and take this all apart and still access the gearbox without you know making anything permanent. So heat inserts look like this. And you can get a heat insert tool, which I have like this, which basically just heats up the end super hot, and then you push the insert in. But I found that that gets too hot. You end up moving the inserts in too deep, even though you can adjust the heat on there. So I typically just put the insert after I've done my pilot hole and everything and make sure it's close to the right size. And then just put it on the end of a kind of throwaway screw or bolt, hold this with the pliers, hit this with a blowtorch, and then go in. And that way I kind of have a little more control over how deep it goes. I'm sure if I use that other tool more often, I could get it down to finding the exact right temperature and making that work better. but. My, my, uh, the way I do it seems to work best for me. So then I also use rivet nuts sometimes. So you can see these are different. The problem with the rivet nuts though, is you need to be able to kind of, this side needs to be on the side that is getting pulled essentially, right? Otherwise, if you put them in like this and you screw something in, I mean, it can just pull out. So cases where I can use those where it makes sense is like in here, right? So, cause I can get inside here can have that so that it's coming down and that way the knuckle duster kind of portion and this bottom part of the stock which will overlap can be bolted into the bottom of the grip so again that just adds stability but then you're able to go ahead and take it apart which is nice so other than that um, I still have a few other inserts I'm gonna need so these are obviously for panels I still have a couple other um, heat inserts I'll put in once I give things a little more time for like the top panel, some other of the longer side panels that go into that riser that I've made. Um, you know, this is kind of the knuckle duster portion. You can see where those, that's where the bolts are going to go in. This is going to sit here. And then this magwell goes on and this kind of, that's what's going to hold the top part to the blaster is it's going to go on through here this will get bolted together and this will be bolted to the bottom of the grip last thing i did is i wanted to have a really cool kind of big you know um tracer on there because so i thought hey this is kind of a 
sci-fi halo style blaster let's put a big tracer on there that has a really cool sleeve so you can see i made this sleeve with these designs this itself was eight hours of printing which is pretty crazy i've never ever printed a sleeve for anything that's that long but because of the design and the thickness of it now i'm hoping it's not too heavy i mean really the plastic doesn't add a lot of weight to it and that's another reason why i always make sure the metal inner barrels go into the threads of the whatever piece i printed so the threads are all the way out here and the metal barrel goes all the way to the end of it again that's just going to help add stability and i mentioned earlier in another video there's outer outer inner barrels in there that are metal that are adding stability and rigidity to the whole hand guard as well so by the time this is done it's going to be super long it's gonna be super cool there's a lot of work probably more work than i thought initially it was really fun at the beginning after a while again i get impatient and i'm getting annoyed because you know when you're printing this many pieces unless you're a 3d printer expert you're going to have some that don't turn out now if they're small enough you can just reprint them if they're big you got to do a lot of finishing work and you know some of that ends up getting frustrating getting annoying and that's just kind of how it is with 3d printing um and if you're doing super long prints and there ends up being like a, you know, a small partial clog on the nozzle, it'll still print. It'll still print okay, but, you know, not as good as it would have. And you got to decide this was, you know, a 24-hour print. Do I want to redo it or can we make it work? And that's what happens sometimes with these. So a little frustrating, but in the end, I think it's going to look great. And, you know, because I use like a textured paint on top of this, and then you know the color and also because this blaster has kind of that halo uh feel which has kind of more of a i guess almost an organic feel to it where you've got the different all these different designs all these different pieces that are going to be on there kind of giving it texture and movement i'm not too worried about any of that so all right that was it that was build number three video so the next video it will be this thing completely put together so you'll finally get to see it completely done. And then, of course, we'll follow that up with a demo video. So you're definitely getting all the ins and outs of everything I do when I build one of these blasters, um, especially one of these complex ones uh, like this. And, you know, some of the bullpup designs and some of the, any of the blasters where I label them like as extreme customs. Those are usually ones that were had a lot of steps involved. So comments or questions, post them below. Of course, like, subscribe share my channel with your friends, and participate in those monthly giveaways. Thanks.